just want to say that the smoke was annoying, a little burning to my throat and my eyes. But now that the smoke is done, it's just uh, the real hot. Oh, it's starting to steam in there. All right. I'll check it soon. I'm feeling like the lack of oxygen, whatever it's the the chemicals being emitted from the charcoal is calming me. I feel calm, a dizzy, dizzy calm. Slightly dizzy, slightly calm because of the the air it's putting out, the kind of air. But uh, when it was smoking, I didn't like that. That was irritating, but also dizzying. Now it's just dizzying without the smoke. Now I'm not sure if I want to toast bread directly on the coals or with using the pan. I'm gonna play with I could put two more on there too. So after boiling potatoes and eggs, I can use the last of the heat, which is actually maybe not even halfway done to toast. Possibly try to boil some water. At least try to boil water in this as a test. I had lavender in, but I was so dizzy that I accidentally spilt it out. <clears throat> Smells toasty. Yeah, this uh, this heats up pretty fast. The bread still has frost from being frozen, and I have no problems just putting it right on because it's pretty much heat that's going to waste anyway. It's got to burn out. Unlike propane, I'd be more cautious about this. <laughs> Give the bread more time to defrost, usually. All right, I want to turn this into this. So, it's got the good thicknesses. I want it longer by a few, maybe a foot, just to be on the safe side. Have a significant length increase. So I'm gonna cut off the branches. Actually, bring it down to where the actual fork starts. Maybe here. And then, oh man, I'm getting assaulted by flies. It is a little bit more narrow. I think that's okay. And then uh, cut it down a ways. And I think I'll probably cut this bottom one down to here and keep that and just see if that's useful for anything. Maybe even keep this too, just a little bit. All right, this is gonna be my upgrade. It's gonna be like over a foot taller. Gonna transfer over the paracord and then uh, see if I can work with this. You know, I'm thinking that something like this, a branch like this would be good for here maybe. <laughs> the same height as this for doing uh, thigh stretching. Thigh stretching is my biggest concern. I don't know if I could accurate act, uh, get my thighs good enough with uh, a bigger one. One real nice thing about maple is it's a kind of a hard wood, strong, and it and the bark peels off pretty nicely. Just in stringy, stringiness, make it a little faster peeling. I wonder if people weave with this maple string. I mean, it's it's not the strongest, but maybe could you make it stronger? It's a string. It's got potential. If I was ambitious enough, I could use that string and just tie it around here somehow, instead of using the paracord. Have a more natural, use the maple bark as the cushion instead. All right, it's been a little bit longer of a wait uh, for my shade. I had bad expectations of the shadows. I didn't know the sun would move this way. Down there is shade. Should have parked down there. So it's almost one. 
I've been in the sun practically the whole time. 104 in the car. All right, I'm just gonna take a peek up here. I know the water tower is up this way. They put up a orange barrier fence thing for some reason, but it was torn down. It does look a little old. These stairs look a little old. All right, just uh, enters, moves into a neighborhood up top. East Street. It actually hit me. I'm not gonna move my foot, that's for sure. I shouldn't have uh, gotten it angry. Come on. All right, it wants to bite me for sure. Let me just block it from biting me. I'm afraid to move my foot now. I shouldn't have rustled it out of the, out of the, the uh, plants. Come on. Okay, here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Wasn't about to move my foot. Okay, I'm not messing with it again. Merrill, Wisconsin. Merrill, Wisconsin. All right, it looks like the police got a call. Two cars, might be another, a third car. Oh, no, maybe not. <laughs> they were just kind of in the way. Hmm. All right, I've come to another park in Merrill. I'm not too happy about this situation. That sun is going to be burning me up. And I really don't have a good solution for shade. This... These trees, these trees are super tall, but I don't, I don't have any shade for when the sun's going to be right over my head, burning the heck out of me. I don't have any solution. This parking, uh, this parking lot is designed for full sun exposure a good portion of the day. And today is, it, today is not a good day for being exposed to the sun. All right, I got a little bit of a strategy here. I'm gonna wait until later, until the heat, maybe nine o'clock, wait till the heat gets bad enough. I'm gonna wait till about nine o'clock because uh, a lot of times uh, city, city park managers will come out and I don't want them to see me parked here. <clears throat> Right in this grass. <clears throat> I don't need to be in the grass at this time. I'll wait till it gets hot enough and the sun is over. Uh, and after the, the city park managers come through checking the garbage and, and doing their daily checks, the bathroom and all that. That way I'm a little more in the clear to just take this, this spot for the midday sun uh, torture. I like to transfer <clears throat> into these jars because I've had issues with uh, honey jars turning upside down too much. So whenever I buy these, I put them in glass jars. I only keep two glass jars. Just reuse them, and they always, uh, they do a uh, more often job standing up and not spilling. This is a neat little path. They piled the stones up to take, I think it's more for walking, but it certainly would be nice if I could bring my car in here for that shade parking. Also, this is supposed to be a river, a dry riverbed in Wisconsin. It's kind of odd. Wow, stairs. I gotta really check this property out. 
could be a potential spot to park my car in better shade. What? What the heck? Some kind of weird tank attached to a building? Chipmunk. It's got maybe electricity. Mosquitoes ain't too incredibly bad. <clears throat> Another abandoned building up there. Yeah, they don't have electricity to this. So you can see it's some kind of tube thing that's going into this brick hut. Electricity wires have been cut. Door is not here. There's going to be a door. Some animal burrows underneath. Oh, loose ground. Pipe that goes into the ground. Wow. Have you seen? Some animals burrowing completely underneath the, the concrete and everything. So, what are they? It looks like it'd probably be just for water. Water tank storage. And they've cut off the, the sections. Um, sections here and yeah strange setup never seen anything like this <clears throat> all right oh and then moving away from it there's a pipe in the ground there's another brick building it looks like it was it's likely <gasps> Uh, associated with that other one. The roof's collapsed. <laughs> How does that happen? The roof gave out as wooden for this brick building, but how do the bricks break? Bricks gave out? Looks too sturdy for that, for a natural cause. <clears throat> How would you read this name? All right, I feel a little bit better about this spot. So I think the sun's coming around to, and, and then I'll be in, hopefully be in the shade still. So if I had one of those big tall vans, I would not be able to fit in here. I'd be running into a ton of leaves, a ton of twigs and sticks, not getting as good a fit as I can with a smaller car. All right, I cut down my Y stick to be more like a V stick. And uh, it's it's nice. I don't really need that extra length for because I'm only doing the, the thighs. And I'm kind of getting Bulgarian squats uh, a little bit using a shorter stick. I kind of like that. I feel very hesitant about going to Wausau today. It's going to be 88 degrees. And that's a big city. They got a Best Buy. I don't want to run down there in the hot weather. <clears throat> I think I'll stay in Merrill for another day. I don't know what makes the best sense, but I know where I can find some okay shade parking here at least. I'd be struggling to find any in Wausau. I was waiting for you to use a blinker. I couldn't tell which way you wanted to turn. Oh, okay. Huh? I, are you the state of Washington car, sir? What? That car over there? Yeah, that's oh, mine. I just checked on it because it looked unusual. Oh, yeah. So I got a tissue that stuck to the bottom of my pot. 
and things stick to the bottom of my pot because cooking with charcoal makes the the thing sticky should be okay <laughs> a little smoky all right i kind of stuck out the heat wave and marrow now today should be 70 as a high so coming further south and this is Texas Community Park between Merrill and Wausau. I, I I think I'd like to stay the day here, but I'll, I'll watch what traffic is like. This is supposed to be a dead end road. Watch the traffic and see what develops. This is kind of a weird way to make use of fence posts. Looks like they're just kind of leaning. They're leaning one on there. All right, it's hard to tell if this baseball park is being used much. This is pretty neat, the old-fashioned scoreboard. It looks like they would slide in. Somebody would stand over here and slide in the, the score. You don't need electronics. Yeah, no way this is used much. Home plate is beat up. This is such a small town, Jesse Field, that they actually, the kids keep their toys here in the park. Whoops. They actually leave toys in the park. This would not fly in a big city. And it kind of looks like there might be electricity out here. They got a broom. They leave a broom at the shelter wow they got enough electronics to keep a security cam you know this this is revolutionary i've never seen toys left at a park or a broom never seen it and this is the fire pit unique operation here this security cam looks as fake as they get. They don't even have lights. You don't even see where a wire... They just kind of posted this thing. It's definitely not not working. Probably likely the same for that other one too then. Right, and I guess they've replaced this. This is the old, old playground stuff, and they have new stuff up. Hmm. <laughs> Looks like they had a big project planned, and it went to waste. Lots of fence here. The posts are going, are getting rusty. This is just sitting as extra fence. What is that, like six foot tall fence for this park? <laughs> they might have started trying to replace this uh, shorter fence, but why? Why do they need such big, why do they think they need such big fence? I do smell, it smells like there's cows nearby. It's just, just kind of a sewage smell. It's kind of too strong. Yeah, there's six foot high fence for the baseball park. That looks like it's rarely used. Well, and then this shorter amount here. Looks like it was quickly put up. Hmm. But yeah, lots of access points. They make sure to keep a lot of open areas to enter. It's not the kind of baseball park they charge money to to uh, spectate at. Looks like I'm making some money out here. We got a $5 bill. And then it looks like another, probably a dollar couple dollars three dollars <laughs> I just made eight bucks wow 
snowmobile trails closed to ATVs when temperature is above 28 degrees. That's weird. Some people try to beat the rush. I try to beat the rain. I want to cook some oats this morning before it rains. I think it's predicted to rain. But first I got undercooked eggs. I had about three. And I like the taste, but that was immediately after cooking. I trust the safety after sitting overnight. It might still be safe, but uh, it's an opportunity to finish cooking these eggs by boiling up the water written and then having that boiled rot water ready for oats so i was watching a little bit uh there's a youtube video from pbs talking about wausau the history of wausau they talked about how people were attracted to this place because of the white pine as i'm moving closer to wausau i am seeing more white pine and i'm a little sad to that I'm not seeing slippery elm so much. It almost seems like slippery elm does better in Midwest, in the Midwest. I'm not sure. I'm just not seeing it in the dense forests of mid Wisconsin. I, I found it in Rice Lake, at least, and Eau Claire. White pine really doesn't offer me much value. I know you can boil the the leaves, the needles for uh, a tea, the inner bark. It, uh, it's got some properties that, for me, chewing on the inner bark, it's sticky and kind of annoying to try to extract, but it, uh, it makes my brain feel like it comes together. It's like an astringent to the brain for some weird reason. Just wonderful. Caught in another rainstorm. And I'm not... I'm about 20... I'm about short of 20 miles of Wausau. And I'm not really in a rush to go there t today, tonight. Tomorrow I'd be more interested, but... I was hoping to be outside a little bit more. All right, I don't understand coal very well. What am I looking at here? Cause this looks like it could be used as charcoal. It's a little wet. It's light. Uh, it's lightweight, it's all black. So it's not completely, it's not completely burnt. This is charcoal. This is burnable charcoal. It's a little wet. But how is it just... Why do they... Why do they dump a pile of this? It's so strange. It seems like I could burn some of that. That's what gets me. I wonder if it's something I could take. Alright, I came down a hill on stairs. So this is an intentionally made area. I got a little bit of a log jam underneath the train bridge. Oh my God, I'm getting attacked by mosquitoes. I think the mosquito population's reduced, but it's, it's still going on. They're still active in smaller numbers. Wisconsin River? Alright, this is my second attempt at trying to get the coals, charcoals burning using the egg carton. It's uh, cooler out and windy, so it, it uh, fizzled out first time. That's a little frustrating. So what I've learned so far with progression, it's, it's a good sign that it's smoking after the flame is out. There was no smoke after the flame the first time. So the egg carton, egg carton helps. And that's what I like to cook in here anyway. Buy eggs, eggs from uh, only 
recyclable paper. One thing that amazes me about this charcoal, it's completely burnt out, but it maintains its form. But all it is is just a powder. It looks like it is it's more solid than it look than it is. <clears throat> kind of a wasted fuel cuz I didn't all I did is well, I cooked potatoes. That's that's kind of worth it, but saves on the saves on the the propane at least but a little wasted I, I gotta cook i gotta plan to cook more than just potatoes i think so i maximize the fuel use all right here's what makes sense to me about uh, my physical shortcomings mainly focused on my my narrow jaw all right i I uh, was in the, my mom's womb, not to, and, and this is all mild. This isn't like a full on total um, lack of nutrients. I was getting some nutrients, but there was just, just a, you know, it was missing the mark, I think, as I was developing in my mom's womb. Even, yeah, even in her womb, I think I was missing the mark. Because as far as what I understand how development works, and it's limited knowledge, I, uh, uh, the, the jaw is the last uh, parts of, the, of, your, of your body to form, from what I understand. And this is from, and I learned this from a teenage girl on a live stream. All right, the jaw is the last thing to form. And I think she's talking about people with cleft mouths. And I don't have a cleft mouth, so I mean, that's, I didn't have that kind of uh, lack of formation. But I, I think that I, I have, I developed, I, I, I had a lack of development in, in my jaw starting at an early age. And, and that just, I mean, that's, that carried over, that carries over through my life, through pu puberty and, and just adulthood and all that. I mean, once, once it's, once you're lacking, that's, it, it no longer exists. That lackness, it's like, it's like kind of maybe being born without an arm. I mean, you just, there's nothing to form. And I mean, this is all mild once again. Lose not being born without an arm is is not my not so mild. But this this is mild. I mean, I'm, I look like I'm fully developed, but I, I'm not. And I suffered a lot because of the uh, the poor, just this the mild lack of formation. I saw pictures of myself as as pretty much a, a baby who is who, uh, and I had a lot of fat on me excess fat already when I should have I shouldn't have uh as a child as a baby I you know like two years old even and beyond I shouldn't have a stomach bigger than my chest all right that's that's uh that's a poor formation and I shouldn't have uh really chubby cheeks I shouldn't have had that but I mean that's that's what happens when you're when you're uh, born and raised with an obese mom even my dad told her not not to have any children that they shouldn't have any children i think i he was thinking instinctually all right he he felt like it i mean i don't know why he even married her but uh he felt like uh i think instinctually having a kid is a bad idea for both of them but they they still went through it because you know, he had his natural instincts. She had her natural instincts in a time uh, when, when sugar really started ramping up, uh, sugar extracts, pushing, you know, the corn subsidies, taking advantage of the corn subsidies. And, and they, just, they just kind of, they went through it. And people today are still going through it. Fat people are still producing babies that are 
autistic suffering from the sugar excesses. And it's not something that it takes a few, it'll take a few generations to get through. This is a drug. They're living in an age of drugs. And so I suffered a lot as a, as a child in and out of the hospital for uh, ear infections, for uh, tonsils. I had, I had tonsil surgery and I had ear surgery. So my memory of my, my early childhood is, is pretty limited because of, I think because of the suffering. I'm like, I can't, I can't really remember my childhood so well. And this is growing up kind of in the countryside. Um, not much going on anyway, but I, I, I had, I had uh, uh, a lot of, of these infections and, and problems. And, and, and I, I think it's because of my, partly a lot had to do with uh, on more narrow jaw. There was less room. My jaw had few nutrients in my mom's womb. So as, as a child, I had a, a more narrow jaw. There was less, less room for my tonsils and my, my ears to work. So more infections were able to really take, take over in, in my, my head region. And that's what resulted in, I was told I, I a uh, uh, doctor told me they could see that I had surgery on my ears. Uh, I don't really recall that. Uh, and my tonsils, I kind of recall, but I was put under sedation. But I had those removed for infections. And, I mean, we were living in a clean environment in the countryside. Uh, and... I question how could I have been getting so many infections uh, as a kid in a clean environment like that. And it comes down a lot to poor nutrition, poor decisions on our nutrition. And, and I, I can remember having this anxiety and growing up with it, feeling like that's normal. It's normal to have brain fog and to have a lot of anxiety, but it's not. It actually comes from having that high sugar diet, having um, hot dogs and, and foods out of cans, just the high sugar cereals. It's just uh, what my mom got. So it's normal to get cavities, to have your tonsils removed, uh, ear infections, and get ear surgery because of the infections, and, and anxiety, and, and then just forgetfulness making a lot of mistakes in school, um, all because of, of this poor diet. Um, and and I, I find it interesting how uh, my grandparents, um, they had a little debate uh, in front of me, sort of, uh, when, we were eat, when I was eating potatoes with the skin on. And, and uh, my grandpa said that the skin is good. And this is my grandpa and his maybe his late 50s, early 60s, saying that, arguing that the skin is good. Well, I, you know, today, I would, as an adult, I would disagree that the skin is good because if you leave the skin on, you can't discover the green spots or the, br the black spots on the potato. A lot of time they could be hidden by the skin, so I would remove the skin myself. And... And so there is a lot of uh, un misunderstanding about about diet, and and uh, the children suffer as a result. So I, I I suffer today because of you know mildly you know it's just like with test scores I found in school I I just barely either either fail or just barely pass a lot of times compared to my peers because I, I just, I can't, I'm falling short and I think I fall short. I've fallen short, just a little short, but it's enough to, to really make the difference between success and failure. And I fall short with uh, the nutritional issue early on. I should, I should have a bigger jaw. 
All right, I think I natu if if uh, there there was uh, proper nutrition involved with my early development in my mom's womb, I should have I should have been on the path to a, a stronger jaw. But instead, it's weaker. And and I'm I think I'm, you know, when you eat more sugar, it become makes you more effeminate. So I think it's there's you know there's the estrogens involved with sugar. So. Uh, it was the uh, my bio my personal biology was getting confused by uh, the uh, the chemicals and and how they interacted with my biology in actual like actual chemicals like food grown in a lab those 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 uh, new, those like protein powders that babies the uh, formulas I think I was fed a lot of that. And then on top of that, just uh, the high preservative types of food and and all of that. And, and you know, my, my diet, I've, I've had to really think about diet because of uh, the suffering that I've, I've had. And I'm, I mean, once again, it's mild suffering. It's not like I'm laying on the bed for days on end. It's just little things. There's, I'm weak. I fall short on. And... And, uh, you know, as, as a person, you know, if you look at Chinese uh, face reading, if, as a person who has a more narrow jaw, they have to weigh their options more. They can't, I, I if I'm faced with a lot of stress, I, I have to weigh my options more and think about, um, is it worth it? All right, a person with a bigger jaw can say, yes, it's worth it. I can fight through this. But me, I can't. I'm too weak. I was born to be weak, all right, and so there's uh, there's there's that uh, physical aspect. I don't I don't have the weight in my jaw when I turn, and apparently you know this this Chinese uh, uh, face reader expert. I wrote I read her book. She said, oh, you can increase the size of your jaw by grinding your teeth together, so that you build the bone. But uh, I don't I don't bother with that. I tried facial exercises for a while, but I don't have anything on me now. I um I guess you could maybe build the uh, the bone uh, a little bit with uh, the exercises, but uh, it's it's I think it's facing an uphill battle there. It, it's it'd be better to have started off uh, with the proper uh, nutrition. In early development, you know, to, to get those genetics uh, in a stronger position early on, uh, so that you don't have to try to re retrograde and and uh, fall back on on tr uh, on re trying to reverse the course. I'm I'm not really reversing the course with my nutritional uh, patterns from from uh, living uh, as an infant to today. I'm just getting. I'm going from a bad, a bad uh, series of of habits and a bad uh, nutritional course onto a normal nutritional course. There's no. I don't. I don't see it as there's a, being a super nutritional pathway to take, one that accelerates beyond normal. I think I'm just kind of going from bad to normal on you know, on my diet. I'm very happy with my diet now. I mean, I. My sugars come from honey, so I eat a lot of honey and oats. I eat uh, uh, this morning now, and I cooked it last night, potatoes and eggs. That's it. Just potatoes and eggs. I don't, and I don't believe that we, as a child, I, I had a lot of potatoes and eggs. There's, there's a lot of, like, I think there, my mom was maybe trying to be, uh, you know, with all the choices at the grocery store, I think she was trying to maybe be too creative and then trying to give all kinds of variety, but it turned out that the variety was just different forms of cakes and cookies. Uh, like, a, you know, one day it's cake, the next day it's cookies. And, and this is the type of diet that you find in jails. I don't think she's ever been in jail, but uh, she did work at a nursing home and learn learned uh, a little bit of the, the diet there and, and, and how they, the, the old people are fed. So she, she took them, those habits with her home. Um, and it's, it's, 
say they don't they don't choose the best options for diet at at uh, at uh, nursing homes because uh, it, they they have to feed a lot of people so they're they're not thinking about the best nutrition they're thinking about the 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 best mass produced uh, meals uh, rather than the individual uh, meals they're thinking about how to feed groups of people in short time with the least with the most efficiency and that doesn't mean that they make the best uh, dietary choices for you and so that's that's why I'm, I'm happy to to make to prepare my own meals uh, and, and it's simple too just potatoes and eggs with some some herbs like maybe parsley but uh, nutrition can be simple but uh, uh, nutritionists are trained to make it complicated maybe um, to, to try to assert their own um, their, their uh, assert their own positions in society uh, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated by just thinking about uh, my childhood past and how it's so foggy and there's reasons it was foggy it's it's I know it's not me it was it was uh, things that were beyond my control as a kid.